Kangat is the systems of poultry farming in Kenya. We have three adapted farming systems. The first one is the free range. We have the semi-intensive. And the third one, we have the intensive farming. The free range farming system is a high way by birds are kept on a free area. Normally, this is done by the majority of people who have a lot of land. Birds are led to scavenge on their own with the cows, the goats in the field. Normally, these animals do not have any house and there's no control of the number of chicks that the bird brood or the number of eggs that the bird is able to do. As I said, this kind of farming is normally adapted by people who have very large pieces of land, people who have 10 acres, they can allow their chickens to roam around with their goats and the cattle. Being a free range, it carries its own disadvantages and advantages. The first advantage is that there's no proper housing that is required, so there's no finances that is required. Everybody can be able to keep the chickens, put them in the house in the evening where you are sleeping, and in the morning you let them roam around with the cattle. Being a free range system, as they roam around, the, the chickens, because they are not taken care of, they are prone to predators. So you can have 10 chickens out in the house and in the evening when they return, they are five. No control is done, so you never know the number of chickens that you have. The other thing that the, these chickens are capable of bringing back to your house is that they can be infested by pests. They can pick the ticks on the, and the fleas in the field as they go around roaming. It has an advantage because it has no economic, it, uh, it, you don't require any finances to do that kind of farming. As long as you have a farm, you have your own house, you can keep two chickens and let them roam around. And these birds, because they walk around, they are very healthy birds, they are able to scavenge their own food so they will eat the greens they'll come back healthy and they have the proper nutrition because they will eat greens they'll eat the worm they'll eat the seed the snakes so they have the protein the carbohydrates from wherever they go but note carefully that th those birds bring nothing to you they don't bring any egg so it's a form of farming system that is done for leisure it has no economic value to the farmer the other system that has been adopted is the semi-intensive this kind of system is whereby the farmer builds a house for the chicken but makes a cage system such that the birds are let to roam at a controlled area and in the evening those birds are allowed to go into the house. It's a little bit controlled as compared to the previous system that I talked about because the birds are not allowed to scavenge. In this kind of system you will need to supplement the food for these birds because they are not scavenging for the worms, for the snakes and the green matter. So in this system, apart from the small minerals that they are getting from the soil, you will need to, to do supplementation in this kind of system. So there is a formulation that you require for this kind of system. It has its own advantages as well. One thing, the bird exercise, so you don't, you don't come across things like lethargy and because the birds are not enclosed in one area there are very little chances of coccidiosis and the diarrhea diseases. Birds are not enclosed in one area. And the other advantage is that the birds are controlled so you are able to tell the population of your birds and the number of eggs that the birds have. You can also be able to brood your eggs because you are, you are, able, you are able to control the eggs. The disadvantage of this 
kind of system is that it is a system that takes a piece of your land yet you'll have to supplement the food so it has some financial cost on the farmer that is doing that kind of system the other disadvantage is that since the bird are allowed to roam around they can also be eaten by the predators and also they can pick any diseases that is roaming around like when there's an outbreak of Newcastle or Goboro in the area they can easily pick up the disease because they have a way that they move around. The other system that now everybody is adapting with the less lad and more people coming into the urban areas is the intensive system. In the intensive system of farming we have two types of farming. We have the deep litter and the caged bird system. The deep litter is whereby the birds are totally enclosed in a house and a litter is placed in about two to five centimeters from the ground. These birds, they are not allowed to go out. They are in an intensive system and so total feed supplementation is required. So for this kind of system, you require to have a compounded feed that has all the nutrients that are required. The system has its own advantages over the other two that we have talked about. One, you are in control of the number of birds that you have. You are in control of the number of eggs that the birds can lay and you can be able to cull the non-laying birds because you are able to see how the birds are laying, the population that you have and the number of eggs that you, you have collected. You can also be able to tell the sick and the unsick birds. So the farmer is in total control of the population of the birds. It is a way that the farmer, it's a system that accords a farmer some profit. This is the first system that has some profit to the poultry farming because you can be able to control the eggs, you can be able to control the diseases, you can be able to control the percentage of laying. This system can be adapted by either the laying bird and the broilers. It has some disadvantages because once the litter gets wet, there is production of ammonia and if the manure, the, the litter is not removed quite often, there's likelihood of production of respiratory diseases. I know many farmers have ever complained that their birds are sneezing at about 5 p.m. when it gets cold. It's because of the amount of manure that is being produced from the litter. So it's advisable that after every one month that litter is removed, a new litter is put in place. Otherwise, you'll have all those problems. The other disadvantage that they have is that there's very easy spread of diseases like coxidiosis. Because the birds are littering on the manure and the other birds are stepping on the manure and eating up the food that is spilling on the floor. So there's highly spread of the diseases like coxidiosis, which is a major factor in the deep litter system. The other advantage I forgot to tell you about in the laying birds is that this is the best system for the laying bird because the laying bird having the advantage of loaming on the manure and stepping on it, cooling itself whenever it wants to cool itself, it can, it can lay up to 95 to 98%. I know farmers can attest to me that their birds, having been put on litter system, they are able to do 95 to 98% laying. The other intensive system that we have adapted currently in Kenya is the caged bird system. The cage is whereby a cage is put in a house and currently we have, we are building cages, initially we used to build our own cages but currently we have the battery cages that are being imported from China. It is an intensive system just like the deep litter system 
but these birds have controlled troughs whereby they are eating on the trough and they don't step on the floor. The birds are standing on a cage so they have water nipples dropping onto them. The birds are ever clean because they are in a cage. It is a system that has been adopted by many people, especially that we have less land. And you can keep many birds in a small area. Like for instance, a cage that is measuring about 14 meters by 7 meters width will be able to house about 296 birds. Those people in towns can be able to keep a population of 300 in an area that is just 4 meters and 7 meters wide. It carries its own advantages. One, the bird being in the cage being clean, there is controlled water intake. So there's no water wastage as compared to the deep litter system. So there's totally no leakage on the floor. The other advantage is that the birds have no feed wastage because they are feeding on a controlled trough. So you maintain a balance quantity of feed that each bird can be able to feed and also the birds never stepping on the floor you have less chances of any respiratory diseases because there's no ammonia production and we have no chances of getting coxidiosis in this kind of system but being a modern system it carries a lot of disadvantages the first disadvantage is that the bird lives all its life on the cage standing. So normally the birds start to fatigue from the first year to the 18th month. So the productivity period of your bird will be just for one year. It is good that you'll be able to control, but the productivity period of your bird is just one year. Otherwise, after one year, if you're not able to control the nutrition, your bird is going to fatigue and they may not be able to produce after one year. The other disadvantage of the cage system is because the bird being enclosed and the nature of a bird is that it's a friendly animal. The birds are not able to lay and we have seen birds laying as low as 60%. You may cut the cost of the diseases but the productivity of your birds is reduced having the cage system. The other disadvantage of the cage system is the disposal of the manure. When the battery cage system came into this country, people rushed to buy the cages. But the main problem was how to dispose the manure. That manure that is produced by the bird, because it has no litter and no bird steps on it, is full of ammonia. If you put that manure into your garden, it's going to burn your crop. So you need to have a way of disposing that manure. I can advise, if you're doing that case system, you may dig a pit and then you can put your manure, let it grow for maybe 21 days and then after that you can dispose it as a deep litter manure. That's the only way. And then the smell of that manure sometimes is a nuisance if you're living in a nested. But if you have enough lard, you can go the cage system. The cage system is a little bit expensive for our farmers. In fact, a cage that is costing, that's going to hold 296 baht is going for 65,000 Kenyan shillings. So you need to cough some money for you to be able to do that system. So those are the th three systems that have been adapted in this country.